It's my Diesel and my friend, and we have our school for soccer. I got me, and this is our song. We'll take time. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm Eliza, and you're watching Horse Rockets, filmed in beautiful Bavaria. This is episode seven, and it's all about what it's like the first year after public school. Before we start this episode, we want to say thank you to our audience. Thank you for watching the show. One of our goals is to have our kids practicing producing something for an audience. The other goal is to show what a homeschooling family looks like. I think we're pretty normal. I, I think we are too. We have had quite a few days that are struggles, but we want to share what we're learning. Now, let's talk about this episode. What are we going to do, Eliza? In this episode, we're going to start Rainy's Riddles, and Daryl's replacing the news with a bit of history. After the news, we'll get on with our main topic, and then our weekly Horse Rockets High Five. Who's our High Five this week, Eliza? I'm not telling you until later in the show. Now it's time for Rainy's Riddles. This episode's riddle is a tricky one. What gets wetter and wetter the more it dries? Stay tuned for the answer later in the show. Back to you, Eliza. I wonder what the answer will be. The only way we're going to find out is if we keep moving forward with the show. Sounds good. Now it's time for Daryl with the news. Oh wait, it's Huntington history. Forgot. Thanks, Eliza. Our hunt into history this week takes us first to the year of 1777, where the first ad for ice cream appeared in the New York Gazette, paid for by Mr. Philip Lindsay. In 1792, a toilet that flushes itself at regular intervals was patented, but if you think you are going to salute this invention with an extra flush, I recommend waiting until November 19th, World Toilet Day. In 1940, German tanks conquered the town of Mordekbruch in the Netherlands. This week's historical salute goes to Raul Petres Pasquera, one of the early pioneers of the helicopter. Raul's inventions were featured as part of the British Path News blog in 2012. This week, I'm reading one of the books in the Greetings from Somewhere series called Mystery of the Gold Coin. Back to you, Eliza. Now it's time for our main topic. In this episode, we're going to talk to Carly. Carly's family, like ours, has just finished another year of homeschool, but this year was after some time in public school. One of our goals of this show is to help a bridge between the families who homeschool and the families that don't. The first year of homeschooling is so challenging that a lot of people find YouTube videos about homeschooling or find videos about families that aren't new to the whole thing. That can make it even more overwhelming. Let's be honest, some people out there are like level 76 mages with all kinds of awesome armor when it comes to homeschooling, and the rest of us are newbies wearing a loincloth. Just because you can witness someone else's doesn't mean you know how to find your own successes. The one-year mark is one of those times when you can sit back for a moment and think about everything that's gone on in the past year. To help us with this conversation, we invite Carly to join us. Eliza and Carly have only just recently started their friendship, and they've discovered that they have a lot in common. Each of us has attended public school up until this year. We both are about the same age and come from a religious family. 
I'm going to disappear now and Carly's going to take my spot. Watch, hold still. How did you do that magic trick? A magician never reveals her secrets. That is very true. Well, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Carly, can you describe some of the challenges it was to leave a regular school behind? Well, I would have to say probably leaving all my friends because I had a good amount of friends in public school and when I got into homeschool, I felt kind of lonely. Mm -hmm. but I would say kind of the exact same thing because, you know, you're used to having a buddy by you, going to the same class with you, and you can talk to her and do homework with her mm -hmm. if there's a subject you need to do that. So, saying missing your friends would be a good one for me. So, Eliza, would you go back to regular school? No and yes. No, because then I would have to be going on a different schedule, and sometimes the stuff they give me would be harder. Mm -hmm. I'm used to going at a slow pace, you might say. Um, my mom sends me emails about what to do for homeschool, so I'm like, okay, I can do that. And I can be away from my siblings, which will be in our next question. Yes, because I would want to be near some of my friends, because it's easier to be near friends all the time instead of calling your sibling friends, because if you have siblings, they will bug you. And you're like, I just want alone time, especially if you're a teenager. You want a long time. What about you, Carly? Um, I think I wouldn't want to go back to public school because you have to wake up super early, especially if you're in middle school. And you have to wake up really, really early. And, like, for me it takes a while for me to get ready, so I have to wake up, like, an hour before I actually have to wake up. So it would be really hard for me to wake up, and I think I'd be late for school a lot. <laughs> the next question is, what do you miss the most? Probably the social aspect of, of, of regular school. Because in regular school, there's a lot of kids who go to regular school, and so in homeschool, there's not a lot of kids. So when you first start off, you feel kind of, you know, lonely. Mm -hmm. We're just saying everything about our friends and stuff. I would go exactly the same with you because, as you said, you miss the friends being near mm -hmm. and stuff. Okay. So, and my second to last question. Describe some of the memories you've had this year. Well, I had some memories of me going places, which was awesome. My favorite one is going to my salt mines, which we have talked in the show, talked about in the show if you've been watching, where we got to lick the wall and floors. Though I did not lick the floors, that'd be gross. But I licked the walls, and it was kind of fun being near there because then we got to see and hear how the people did it. It was awesome. What about you? That sounds awesome. Um. It is. I would have to say, I would have to say going to the castle in Nuremberg. I'm not exactly sure what the castle was called, but we got to see all the stuff that they had like in that castle, and we got to see where um, the king would sit to you know go to church and all. And then we went to the dungeons, and it was really cool because they explained. Well, it was actually kind of scary, but they explained what like torture devices they used on the. Um, prisoners. Torture devices? Torture devices. <laughs> and one of them, they would take a hot pole and put it in this thing. It was kind of like tongs, but they would stick it under their um, armpits and on the bottom of their feet. So I was kind of scared after I left there. Ooh, kind of reminds me of like Star Wars, what they did with <laughs> the R2D tubes. Yes. Carly, mm -hmm. can you describe to me what your favorite subject is out of all the subjects? Um, can I only pick one? You can pick as many as you want, but you have to tell me if, you have to tell me if they're your first favorite or second favorite, favorite or your third favorite. Um, Sorry. my 
My second favorite would have to be math because I just enjoy learning math because um, what I'm learning now is algebra and I really um, like, I guess you could say I'm a math geek, but um, I just love learning about how you can, you know, work with integers and work with X, my little buddy X. So, what about you? My favorite subject, I would have to say my first favorite subject, is reading. I'm an eighth level, I'm an eighth grade level reader, which I can, which I read a book called Come Home. It was for like adults. It was kind of awesome for me. My second favorite subject, I would have to say, is science. Because then we can do cool stuff like turn blue water to pink or blue water or water to blue. Which is kind of easy, but in my family it makes it cool. <laughs> so, my last question. Tell us about, the about your hardest thing with homeschool. My hardest thing with homeschool is being near my siblings. As a teenager, you're like, I don't want to be near you, I want my alone time. Mm -hmm. That's what I want, and my siblings, if you met them, you would say they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Not even my grandparents control them. Which is kind of sad. What about you? Well, I would have to say kind of the same as you because, you know, as teenagers we need our space and we respect other people's space, so you're like, why can't you respect my space? But, um, I would have to say the same as you. I'm being like my siblings right now. Bye! Thanks for having me. You're welcome. In this part of the show, we share something we've found that's worthy of the grand status of high five dunk. This week's high five, we're going to tell you about Doritos. Doritos came from Disneyland's dumpsters. That's right. Hat tip to gizmodo.com for this story. Turns out, Frito Lay Snack Company had a restaurant inside of Disneyland back in the day. At the end of the day, when the tortillas wouldn't sell, they'd throw them in the dumpster. That is, until a salesman came along and suggested that they cut them up and fry them to serve the next day as a new snack. Sometime later, one of the marketing people picked up on it. By 1964, the Dorito we know and love was born. You, Dorito, have been found worthy of the grand status of High Five Dorito. If you want to read the full article by clicking the link below this video. Hi there, YouTubers. Have you figured out what what gets wetter and wetter the more it dries? The answer to today's riddle is my stool. Well, Jumbo, a towel. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this riddle. If you got one you'd like to share, go ahead. Compliment below. This episode is produced in part by the viewers like you. No, we don't ask for a donation. We just ask you to click on our Amazon link the next time you go shopping online. That little click will tag your shopping session so a percentage of what you purchase gets donated to the show. Unless you're the sort of person that reads URLs religiously, you shouldn't notice. It doesn't add a cent to your shopping experience. Dad, is there anything special about episode 7? Well, in honor of Agent 007, I say let's get out of this episode with cool spike poses. So, fake guns, back to back. I'm not completely back to back. It's close enough. Anyway, all right, so Leave cheesy, witty bannering. Carly, thank you for doing the show with us today. I Bye. think it's going to be great. Thank hey, you for watching. We're dropping the live stream here, so yeah. Thanks, um, love you. Bye. Bye for me. Bye for Carly. Now I guess my little driving room, you and the joint now. Right, we might be able to hear him. I'm not sure. Can you hear? You, we can hear. You can hear us. We can't hear you yet. I'll do that.
volume's all the way up. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, so long, Carly. We have you bye. Adios, amigos. Thank you, everybody. Love you. All right. Oh, we should have put that plug in there. We'll do that next week because this week was really a test. What plug in there? The plug about um, 